الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله اللهم رب هذه الدعوة الدعوة والصلاة لا تي محمد رسول الله اللهم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين عباد الله اتقوا الله حق التقوى وراقبوه في جميع أحوالكم سرا وجهرا We start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending our peace and blessings to our noble and beloved Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam and I remind myself and yourselves on this blessed day of Yawmul Jumu'ah to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be feared as he reminded us of this in the Qur'an when he said A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih 
wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be feared and do not die except in the state of submission to him we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to die in the state and we ask allah to be resurrected in the state and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all and to protect our families and to protect our friends and our relatives from the hellfire ameen ya rabbil alamin Brothers and sisters, there is a particular subject. If you post about it, your account with a million followers will be flagged, gone. You'll be blocked from your accounts on social media. If your password is stolen the bank password that you use to log into your bank account they can access your money and all your savings can be gone if your personal information and your identity is leaked gone someone can take your identity over and commit all sorts of crimes that you will be blamed for. Very scary statements. Very scary statements. And we spend so much time protecting ourselves from these types of scenarios so that we don't have to put up with this type of headache. No one wants to go down that path. But when I stand here on the minbar, and I say a scarier statement. It doesn't strike fear in the hearts the way the previous statements struck fear or made us cautious, made us alert, made us aware. There's a particular word. Imagine if I told you there's a word that if you say it, your actions will go to zero. There's a word that if you say it, or a statement, if you say it, you'll be ascribed to the hellfire. Someone might hear me say this and say, Ya Sheikh, this is too extreme. What are you talking about? A statement, Allahun Ghafoorun Rahim. Allah is the most forgiven, merciful. Why are you making things so complicated? La Wallah. The only reason a statement like this is considered extreme or harsh is because we do not take faith as serious as we do our money in our bank accounts, our jobs, our social media accounts, our followers, our social status. These things are things that we directly care about. But when it comes to spirituality, it's not the case. Therefore, these types of statements can be perceived as extreme, when indeed they are not. What if I say a word can make your iman disappear or reduce the amount of tawheed that you have? The Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he said in a hadith on Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لا يستقيم إيمان العبد حتى يستقيم قلبه That the iman of a servant will not be straight until their heart is straight. The iman, faith, will not be straight until the heart is straight. ولا يستقيم قلبه حتى يستقيم لسانه and the heart cannot be straight and will not be straight until the tongue is straight. Yes, brothers and sisters, the tongue, the tongue, one of the most important organs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. This tongue is what Allah gave us to pronounce the kalima, 
the word of Tawheed, the word of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, the heaviest statement in the universe, and the most truthful thing that any person on the face of this earth or in the universe can say, there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah. Allah gave this responsibility to this tongue. Hence, this tongue was given great importance. In another hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed a servant can speak or utter a word, لا يلقي لها بالا. They do not even pay attention to it. And because of it, their faces will be distanced from paradise or be deepened into the hellfire as far as the east and the west. Meaning they'll never come together. Because of a word or a statement that someone can utter without even knowing. And this is the scary part. A lot of us say things and we don't even notice. A word that we, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يلقي لها بالا. You may not even remember when you said it, but it can be the reason of a person's torture in the hellfire or being distanced from paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of paradise. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, one of the greatest blessings that Allah gave us is this tongue. This tongue that allows us to spill out what's in our hearts. This tongue that allows us to communicate joy and grief. This tongue that makes our lives nice and beautiful, communicating with the people that we love and we enjoy communicating with. Without it, everything will be bottled up inside of us. Communication will be difficult, but it's one of the greatest, greatest gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us of this in the Qur'an. When He said, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ And did we not give Him, meaning Bani Adam, the sons of Adam, and did we not give them two eyes and a tongue and two lips so that we can communicate with? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, عَلَى لِسَانِ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ And look, Musa alayhi salam was one of the great messengers of history, one of the top five, and the only one who spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kalimullah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him the responsibility of messagehood. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, you will become a messenger and you will convey my message to Fir'aun, the biggest enemy of Allah in history. The first thing he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? One of the first things he said, min lisani qawli. He said, and untie the knot in my tongue so that I can convey the message properly. He thought of his tongue. And, in, and not only that, but he also thought it's befitting for his brother to be a prophet as well with him. And the only reason he thought so was for a reason that he mentioned. Musa alayhi salam mentioned. He said, وَأَخِي هَارُونَ هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانَ فَأَرْسِلْهُ مَعْيَ رِدْئَيْنْ يُصَدِّقُنِي My brother Harun is more proficient in his tongue, so send him with me as a prophet. His tongue was the only reason he was seen to be befitting of prophethood by Musa alayhi salam. Imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the answer and told him, Sanashuddu abudaka bi akhik. We will make your brother a, 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 messenger, a prophet with you. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us about the believers who will succeed. When He said, Qad aflah al mu'minun. Indeed, the believer will succeed. But who? الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who have khushu' in their salah. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ 
and those who avoid lagu, unnecessary speech, lagu, something that has no meaning, something that has no benefit to anyone. No way a believer will be found indulging in something that has no benefit whatsoever. A believer cannot be seen. But not a regular believer, a successful believer. Because Allah labeled the successful believers as the ones who fit these characteristics. The second one, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ معرضون. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't stop there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell us that the believer is the one that only controls their tongue, but the believer is someone who does not like to listen to people who have loose tongues either. People who just talk tharthara. As a matter of fact, one of the most disliked people by Allah are athartharoon, the people who just speak for the sake of speaking, with no meaning, with no point, with no direction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in an ayah, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا Describing the believers, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْهُ And if they hear people engaging or indulging in these types of useless talks, if they're just dropping foul language, if they're backbiting, if they're slandering, if they're speaking about something that is useless, the believer avoids them. Says, oh, I got to go right now. Man, next I'm not going to waste my time with these people. وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ And they say to them, you know, to us is what we do and for you is what you do. You know, like, I have better things to do with my life. Because the believer has no time for that. The believer knows they have 60, 70, 80 years on the clock and they do not want to waste a minute because they're trying to get the highest level of Jannah they can. That's the mindset of a believer. A believer understands that they are going to die. A believer understands that part of their life, they were either in misguidance, they were under the age, they were pu- uh, under puberty, right? Their actions were not accounted for. The rest of the third of their life, they're going to be asleep or they're going to be busy. And you know, when they have free time, the believer understands that this free time is very valuable and you cannot use it for just anything. And you don't have the time to sit there and listen, let alone indulge in any speech that has no benefit or effect on your hereafter. Positive effect, that is. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, الْمُسْلِمُ مَنْ سَلِمَ النَّاسُ مِنْ لِسَانِهِ وَيَدِهِ That the Muslim is the one who does not harm anyone with their tongue or their hands. Of course, unjustly. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever believes in Allah and the hereafter, if you truly believe, this is a challenge to every believer. He says, if you truly believe in Allah and the hereafter, then say something that is good or stay silent. Don't say anything. So a believer thinks before they speak, Say, okay, is what I'm going to say going to benefit anyone? If not, they withhold. Because it's absolutely no benefit. If there's some benefit, they would say it. And sometimes they won't. Because if they're cutting off someone else who will say something more beneficial, then there's no point of their beneficial speech that's going to be less beneficial. So they respect the status of others with their tongues. And in a long hadith, a part of a long hadith, a famous hadith uh, uh, on the authority of uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the great companions, he says, the Prophet ﷺ tells Mu'adh ibn Jabal, should I not inform you of the head of the matter, Ra's al-Amr, and its pillar, wa'amudah, and the highest point, wa'darwatu sanamih, after he described, the Prophet ﷺ described to Mu'adh the deen, he broke it down, the obligations, 
and the prohibitions, right? He told him, you want to know the, the highest point? Do you want to know the pillar? Do you want to know the head of it? Do you want the, the whole thing? He said, yes. Ya Rasulullah, I'm listening. I'm all ears, Ya Rasulullah. And I'm sure we are too, because we want to know what Rasulullah is going to tell us. He said, he held his tongue, and he said, Amsik alayka hadha. He said, control this. That's everything. If you control this, you got it all. But if you can't control it, the moment you let it go rampant, that's it. It's spiraling down after that. So let us take this opportunity, inshallah, and reflect and introspect, brothers and sisters, and think of our tongues and how we use them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who control their tongues. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for what our tongues uttered that displeased Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who say what is best or stay silent. أَقُولُ مَا سَمِعْتُمْ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله اتقوا الله Let us fear Allah brothers and sisters with our tongues and how we use them But there's one thing and one parallel and one bridge that I want to make today that perhaps many of us did not associate in the past. And that is the connection between our texts, our posts, our comments, our likes and dislikes on social media. That is no less in sin than the tongue in one in, and what it utters as a matter of fact what you post up there can be what your tongue can say multiplied because the amount of people it impacts either negatively or positively is something that you can never count because once it is posted once you backbite someone once you slander someone, once you take away from the honor of someone, once you accuse someone of something that they did not do, every time someone reads that, every time someone acts upon that, every time someone transmits that to someone else, guess who is getting the sin for that? Perhaps a word can be said to one person, or I could say it to a thousand here, but if it's not recorded, at least you know it's limited to everyone in here. But when it's constantly visited and revisited and revisited, imagine how much sin a person is racking doing that. So brothers and sisters, we need to take a deep introspective dive into our interactions on social media as much as we spoke about the tongue in the first khutbah and I transmitted to you the ayat and the hadith that I did and I'm sure you all understand the gravity of the situation but also understand that those who indulge in what we call modern day cancel culture on social media and listen to videos and pass on videos or comments or posts or articles that backbite, that slander, that speak down, that discredit, that take away from the benefits of a particular scholar, a student of knowledge, a sheikh, an imam, someone that is benefiting the community, that is benefiting the world. Know that if you don't have what it takes to defend yourself in front of Allah. And if you have no answer, then you're going to get all that sin. The person who initiated this argument, the person who spoke about the scholar, can have 
an understanding or a misunderstanding that they could stand in front of Allah and say, Ya Allah, I heard, I said, and you said, and this is why, and they have an excuse. But the person who transmits it without knowledge, without proof, without benefit, Wallahi, what's their answer going to be in front of Allah? What's their answer going to be in front of Allah? Wallahi, I am very saddened. And this is the reason, obviously because it's, it's holiday season and whatnot, we, we usually give khutb about holidays and Christmas and greeting and this and that. But wallahi, because of you know, what's going on, especially amongst the younger generation. The older generation, you heard plenty of khutb insha'Allah about, about these holiday seasons and our stance as Muslimin towards them. But for the younger generation who are engaging in this, when I see someone who, wallahi, probably never read the whole Qur'an, one khitmah, or someone who is struggling to read 10 pages of Qur'an a day, or someone that never read five books in Islam, five books in a particular science, in any of the sciences of Islam, they don't know anything. And they speak about a scholar, and they speak about... Uh, a, an imam, they speak about a shaykh, someone who has given to Islam, who has done for Islam more in one year than they would probably do in their whole lives. I don't know how a person has it in them to do that. What will they say to Allah when this person grabs them in front of Allah and says, Ya Rabb, tell this person why they slandered me. Ya Rabb, ask this person why they said this and that about me when they didn't know. And then the person will be asked, and they will stand before Allah, and they will say, I don't know. It's just, you know, it was the cool thing to do. Brothers and sisters, we need to control what we say with our tongue, as well as what we write and what we post and our opinions online, Wallahi ya ikhwah, you don't need to write your opinion on everything. You don't need to have one. I don't, despite what I studied and what I went through, I still until today don't feel entitled to have an opinion on so many things. Hence why I don't post anything. I don't comment. I read, they say, I don't need to comment because my opinion doesn't have a value. If it was valuable and I saw it, that it, it would be beneficial, then I would put it. If not, then what the Rasul Sallallahu says, Yakfini, Amsik alayka hadha, hold it back. Hold it back. Because if you're not sure it's going to benefit you on the Day of Judgment, if you're not positive that the good outweigh the bad, the good, the, the good outweighs the bad, then khalas, just leave it. Drop it. You don't need to like or dislike. You don't need to comment. You don't need to say anything. Listen, benefit, read for others, take in. But the moment you feel like you can benefit others for sure, and you analyzed, and you prepared yourself standing in front of Allah and answering, then you could post something. The moment you envision that, that's when you could go ahead and do it, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for everything that we uttered upon our tongues that displeased Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who you said about them in Surah An-Nisa, الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ Ya Rabb, forgive us for the lemon. Forgive us for these things that we say that we do not even notice, that perhaps took us years deep into the hellfire, Ya Rabb, forgive us for them. Ya Rabb, make us turn a new page. Forgiven, Ya Rabb, give us a tawbah that is completely sincere on this blessed day of Yawm al-Jumu'ah. Ya Rabb, forgive us and forgive our parents and enter us all into Jannah, Ya Rabb. Ya Allah, we ask you to unite us with our parents and our children and our spouses and our grandparents, and our whole progeny who believe in you, and attest to your tawheed, enter us and unite us in Jannatul Firdaus, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibadallah, inni da'an fa'aminu. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana, wa israfana fi amrina, wa thabbit aqdamana, wa ansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. 
اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اغفر لنا هزلنا وجدنا وخطأنا وعمدنا وكل ذلك عندنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر خطايانا اللهم اغفر لنا حصائد ألسنتنا اللهم اغفر لنا حصائد ألسنتنا وتب علينا يا تواب يا رحيم يا الله اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى يا رب العالمين اللهم قر أعيننا بتحرير المسجد الأقصى في حياتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين الذين ظلموا المسلمين يا رب اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر وأرنا فيهم يوما أسودا يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثن بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من إنسه وجنه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وأقم الصلاة <تصفيق> الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. اللهم لا إله إلا استو استو اعتدلوا. إن شاء الله make sure everyone outside if there's a place inside just come in and fill the gaps usually to the back to the right and to the left there's always a space إن شاء الله fill the first row in front and then go back to the second بإذن الله. الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر اللهم صل على السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله